Hey, you guys, you know what time it is. You know what day it is, the 10th day of February. I'm still on my Black History Month. I'm on a HBC Your Tour, baby. So, you know, this is your virtual tour of all things HBCU through the rest of the month, basically, for Black History Month. And I again, I started with uh, land-grant institutions. And um, <clears throat> yesterday I did the first five. Today I'm doing the next five. We're going to start off with Fort Valley State University. It is in Georgia. Georgia. Uh, it's 122 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Honey. 22. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to dig into Fort Valley State. I'm covering Kentucky State University, Langston University, Lincoln University, and North Carolina a and State University today. Um, it is the only university in the world which at once is a university system of Georgia institution. It is an 1890 land grant institution, of course. And um, yeah, their motto is Empower the Impossible. It was founded in 1895. In 2018, it had a size of 2,776 students. Uh, it sits on 1,365 acres of land. Uh, they have several degrees, but their most popular majors are biology, criminal justice, psychology, management, and veterinary technology. It is a D2, an NCAA D2 sport. Um, D2 school in the areas for men is basketball, tennis, football, cross country, track and field, co-ed, cheer. For women, um, it's basketball, tennis, volleyball, softball, cross country, track and field, co-ed, cheer. So yeah, I, for Valley State University, up in the house, up in the house, up in the house. Again, um, one of the things that I find interesting about Fort Valley State University is that they offer they offer something called, and I'm trying to get to it because I really want to tell you the right thing. Um, they have something called border state waivers. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and it's available for... <clears throat> Going back up. Border waivers for Alabama, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee residents. So I want to find out more about this for you guys. So um, students who are residents of neighboring states are invited to apply for undergraduate admission and pay the same in-state tuition as students who are in Georgia. So most schools, you know, they have the out-of-state tuition is so is significantly higher. Usually you pay more for out of, if you live out of state. At Fort Valley State, if you are in a neighboring state, Alabama, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, you can apply and pay the same in-state tuition as Georgia residents. That's bomb. That's really, really just awesome. And I just mean just that's just totally awesome. I don't I don't even know what else to say about that. Um, they have the College of Arts and Sciences, Education and Professional Studies, Agriculture, Family Sciences and Technology. Um, and so uh, check out Fort Valley State University in Georgia. Again, you don't have to live in Georgia to get in-state tuition with them. If you are a resident of Alabama, North Carolina, Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, they have something called Border Waivers. Check it out. Um, they might have a degree program that fits you or your child. Kentucky State University, it is no brainer. I wish somebody would ask me where it is because it's in Kentucky. Uh, but specifically, it's in Frankfort, Kentucky. But I mean, it's Kentucky State University in Kentucky. So um, let's get into all things Kentucky State University. Um, has a 130 year tradition of educating students to make a difference in the world. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, 130 years Kentucky State University has been around. Pretty cool. Really cool. Um, trying to get it to pull up something for me here. <clears throat> so now uh, the university was chartered in May 1886 as the state normal school for colored persons. Remember, we heard that term yesterday a lot um, when it came to like Delaware State. It was, you know, the, the colored term was up in that. Um, you just have to understand 1800s. That's how black people were referred to. We were colored. 
Um, and so it was the only the second state supported institution of higher learning in Kentucky. Um, so yeah, just a little something. Toward the end of the Civil War, the city donated fifteen hundred dollars, which was a pretty good amount of money in eighteen hundred and eighty six. Um, and so <clears throat> I thought that this really interesting to see how you know you don't know what the government has contributed to a lot of HBCUs. And when you start talking about a city that is that is still considered government, they had to get they got funds, and um, it was only again state supported. That's still government. We only think about government in terms of federal, but there's there's city, state, and local, um, and federal. Excuse me. So um, that was pretty cool. Fifteen hundred dollars was a lot of money in um, 1886. A lot of money. Um, the first building rec recitation hall, it is now called Jackson Hall, was erected in 1887. The school opened, the new school opened on October 11, 1887 with three teachers, 55 students, and John H. Jackson as the president. So um, really cool um, information. I like to see stuff like this. Um, the campus sits now on 882 acres of land. It includes out of that 311 acres of that is agriculture research farm and 306 acres are environmental education. It's um, for the, excuse me, environmental education center. It is a public institution. Um, it approximately has about 2,200 students and 135 full-time faculty members. So uh yeah I, here's something interesting in the early 1930s um 1938 the school was named the kentucky state college for negroes but in 1952 they dropped the term negroes that was only in 1952. 1952 we just got rid of the term negroes Nineteen oh two, the name changed from um, to Kentucky Normal Industrial Institute for Colored Persons. It changed again in nineteen twenty six, nineteen thirty. It changed nineteen thirty eight. It changed again. Nineteen fifty two. It changed again. In nineteen seventy two, it became Kentucky State College. Well, I'm sorry. It came. It went from Kentucky State College to Kentucky State University. So again, the. <laughs> The term Negroes and a lot of stuff from our past, that wasn't that long ago. It really wasn't. It really, really wasn't. So I don't want to get into that. Um, what are some of their degree programs? <clears throat> Let's get into it. So they have the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Agriculture, Communities, and the Environment, Business and Computational Sciences, Natural, Applied, and Health Sciences, public service and leadership studies. They have graduate studies. They also have adult learning, the Atwood Institute, Institute Distance Education, um, so much more. Check them out. Find it very interesting that they have um, College of Public Service and Leadership Studies. You don't, have, you don't find that um, very many um, uh, institutions that have that. So um, they have more, over uh, 80 majors and programs. Check out Kentucky State University. It is in Frankfort, Kentucky. We're going to move over to Langston University. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's get into the history of Langston University. It is the only HBCU, um, I believe, in um, Oklahoma, I want to say, but let's see. I believe it is the only HBCU in Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to get to it, you guys, I promise. Um, yeah, it is the only HBCU in Oklahoma. And um, yeah, just, yeah, amazing. Um, I don't want to see this page because this is a little bit confusing. Um, there's so much here and it's just not in order. Um, April 22nd, 1890, Langston City was officially established. 
Um, and the city of Langston had a population of 600, had 25 retail businesses in 1892, the year in which a common school was built and opened with an enrollment of 135 people. Um, in July 1892, Oklahoma Industrial School and College Commission um, petitioned that Langston have a college. So, yeah, under the Morrill Act of 1890, that's why they're a land grant college. Um, on March 12, 1897, the Colored Agriculture and Normal University opened. Again, that term colored comes up again. So yeah, that's how Langston University kind of really got its start. Um, during the uh, President Page's uh, leadership from 1898 to 1950, the campus expanded to 160 acres. Enrollment increased from 41 to 650 and faculty from four to 35. Impressive. Very, very impressive. Um, they had an initial budget of five thousand dollars. Isn't that amazing? Langston received eventually a hundred thousand acres located primarily in western Oklahoma. This is an FYI, but um, <clears throat> get into Langston University um, when you have an opportunity. They have the School of Agriculture and Applied Sciences, Arts and Sciences, Business, Education and Behavioral Sciences, Nursing and Health Professions, Physical Therapy, Summer Programs, and Graduate Education. Um, so they're in Oklahoma City and they have a campus in Tulsa. Um, they also have some graduate programs. Really take an opportunity to take a look at Langston University. It is in the only HBCU in Oklahoma. Lincoln University of Missouri. <clears throat> Remember again, we're still on land grant institutions and there are 19 of them. There are over a hundred HBCUs. So yeah, we have a lot. So again, I just wanted to start with like the first 19 that are land grant institutions because they're, you know, 1800s, um, some of the older ones. <clears throat> and just, just letting you know what those programs are. Okay, so Lincoln University at the close of the Civil War. Um, if you don't already know, the 62nd United States Colored Infantry was stationed at Fort McIntosh, um, Texas. They composed primarily of Missourians. So they took steps to establish an educational institution in Jefferson City, Missouri, which they named Lincoln Institute. So um, they contributed $5,000. Again, that was a lot of money back then. And um, it was supplemented by approximately $1,400. On January 14th, 1866, Lincoln Institute was formally established. And um, yeah, on September 17, 1866, the school opened its doors to the first class in an old frame building in Jefferson City. Um, so amazing. In 1870, they began to receive aid from the state of Missouri for teacher training. 1871, um, Lincoln Institute moved to the present campus. Um, so just a lot going on there. Um, in 1877, at the passage of the normal school law permitted law in Lincoln graduates to teach for life, to teach for life in Missouri without further examination. Um, they became a formal inst state institution in 1879. Amazing history, lots of good stuff here at um, Lincoln um, <clears throat> University of Missouri. It is in Jefferson City, Missouri, by the way. So when you, when I say that it moved, it's moved to the present campus. It's still in Jefferson City, Missouri. Um, it is uh, all these schools that I told you about are accredited, by the way. So don't be freaking out, people. Are like, ah, no, listen. Again, they're all they're all accredited. So. Um, they have a lot, they have their own, you know, they have ROTC. A lot of schools do have that and some of them don't. So some of their degree programs, they have the College of Agriculture, Inter Environmental and Human Sciences. They have the College of Arts and Sciences, School of Business, College of Agriculture, Environmental and Human Sciences for in the graduate program. Um, again, Arts and Sciences, School of Business, School of Education for the graduate program, School of Education and Undergraduate, and then School of Nursing. 
Um, they have some graduate certificate programs. They have one in mental health and instructional technology. They have a master's of art in higher education and HBCU. Um, so pretty interesting. They have an RN to BSN program, public administration on the School of Business, College of Arts and Sciences, Fine Studio Arts, Journalism, Biology, Civil Engineering Technology, Clinical Laboratory Science, Drafting Technology. Um, so really pretty cool stuff. Uh, check them out again. This is Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. Our last school for today is North Carolina A&T State University, also known, uh, that's affectionately known, but it's all it's really North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. That's what the A&T stands for, but who's spelling that out all the time? So that's why it's always affectionately known um, as NCANT um, State University. It's in North Cadillac in North Carolina. <clears throat> if you don't know, it's in Greensboro, North Carolina. And um, it's been, you know, educating people for over 130 years. Today, um, there are over 12,556 Aggies. Um, they're the most high A and T, so they're pretty proud about that. As a land grant doctoral research university, um, focusing on STEM education. They impact 70,000 plus alumni across, or at least there are 70,000 plus alumni across um, the, mark, the United States really are making an impact from Silicon Valley to Congress. So that's what's happening. And uh, so let's get into a little bit more history about a and State University. They're, I'm going to tell y'all right now, their, their website is a little weird. I'm just going to be real with you. It's it's a little weird. All this scrolling and some other stuff is just weird. Just, um, it's weird. It really is weird. I don't know who thought of this, but it's not necessarily that user-friendly. No. no. <laughs> it's cool. Not user-friendly. So um, let's get some more details. The college is was established in 1891, and this is what its intent was, to teach practical agriculture and mechanic arts and such branches of learning as relate thereto, not excluding academic and classical instruction to African-American citizens of North Carolina. The first president of the college uh, was John Oliver Crosby in 1892. The second president was Dr. James B. Dudley in 1896, and he served until 1925. 1890, in 1899, it conferred its first degrees. Um, so yeah, the longest serving leader in ANT's history is Dr. Ferdinand D. Bluford. He served from 1925 to 1955, 30 years, long time. So um, that's the history. They, you know, they've had some 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 really solid, um, impressive things happening. I, what I want to tell you is again, y'all, we always talking about, oh, that was so long ago. A lot of stuff was not that long ago. It really was not that long ago. Remember, I, I opened Black History Month talking about the um, poor students at the sit-in, the, the sit-in in Greensboro, okay? Y'all got to, we got to get into it and really realize that this stuff was not that long ago. 1960 was not that long ago. There are people still living today that remember a lot of this stuff. So just, you know, keep that in mind. But that's a and State University. I want to get into some of their academics so that you can kind of know what they offer. <clears throat> because just saying a and does not tell you what they offer, okay? So they have accounting, adult education, advanced certification in family and consumer sciences. That is very unique. Advanced waste management certificate, agriculture and environmental systems, agricultural education, animal science. Applied engineering technology, applied mathematics, automotive engineering technology, boom. Atmospheric sciences and meteorology, boom. Applied science and technology, bioengineering. HBCUs have bioengineering degrees, by the way. Biological engineering, biology, built environment. That's, that's in their College of Science and Technology. Business admin, business information technology, child development and family studies. Chemistry, chemical engineering, civil architectural and environmental engineering, computational science and engineering, computer science, computer engineering, construction management, criminal justice, electronics technology, 
economics. I mean, it just goes on and on. Family and consumer science, uh, food nutritional science, graphic communication systems, industrial and systems engineering, journalism and mass communication, kinesiology, laboratory animal science, landscape architecture, leadership studies, that's in their college of education, liberal studies, management, management information systems, um, music, nano engineering. They also have a nursing program, physics, occupational safety and health, professional theater. a and got that. Um, school counseling, rehabilitation counseling and rehabilitation counselor education. That's in the College of Education. You don't see that often, school administration. Um, they, of course, they have social work, sociology, speech, supply chain management, teaching, technology education, technology management, and visual arts and design. They got some programs and degrees for you. That's all I'm saying. So those are today's five land grant HBCU institutions. Check back tomorrow and I'm going to give you another five. Have a great day. Remember to spread a lot of love and light on this 10th day of Black History Month.